Now let's get started and explore the interface. Get the basics by creating our first blank app. Now I'm here on make.powerapps.com and I'm going to go to create and then I will start from a blank app. The idea here is to see how to create and understand the controls inside the designing interface. As I mentioned in the previous class, we are going to get started with the Canvas app. So let's go to blank Canvas app and click on create. Now we have to provide the app name and choose the format. Let's give it a name. Let's say Power Apps Learning App. That will be the name of my app. I will choose the tablet format because the screen is bigger. We could also choose phone format and it would come with a small size like a smartphone screen. But today we have ways to do that to change the screen size dynamically. We have already screen templates that are responsive. I believe that less and less this second option will be used. But if you are developing an app that you know that's going to be used only in a phone, you may use this second option. The tablet one is good for bigger screens, such as computers or tablets. Okay, I'm going to click on create and that's going to launch the app editor. After a couple of seconds, we are seeing already our interface in here. Okay, here we can see that we have this white part in the middle that's called the Canva. That's why it's called Canvas app, because we are going to paint this Canva, let's say. We are the artists now. And then we have several things around here that we are going to see with more details in the next class. But the basics here is that we have screens that we can add. Here we have the tree view where we see all the components and I can add a new screen. Once I click on it, we have already pre-made screens, some templates, and we have also a blank screen that we can start from scratch. We are not creating a new screen right now. Other thing that we are going to do very often in the apps is inserting controls. With the screen selected or with nothing selected, here in the top we have insert and we have several controls that we can insert here. We can insert text labels, forms to edit data, text inputs, gallery that's for displaying data and we are going to see with way more details in the lessons, rectangle, date pickers and so on. If we insert a control, for example a button, each control has its properties. Basically here in the right we have properties for that control. For example, this button was just inserted and the button name is called button1. We could change the name of the button. And we have some ways to do that. We could start with a prefix such as btn, meaning that's a button, making it easy to identify what the control is when we have a lot of controls and put some name of the button, for example, warn user. And then we could change the text, for example, show warning then it changes the text inside the button we have other properties such as visible or not that we can play with once we develop more complex apps we have the colors for example the background color that we could change we have also the text color the border let's say a very thick border here the border radius i could remove the border radius the font weight font and so on Okay, so each control has its properties. If I insert, for example, a text input, it's another control that has different properties. Some of them are the same, but we have other properties for the text input. For example, the clear button that will show a button to clear the text once I have something on it. Enable spell check, maximum length, mode if it's single line or multi-line and so on. Okay, so this is the basics of the app. We are going to insert controls to build our logic. We also have the data connection part where you need to connect to the data. Once we know how to build apps, we can connect to the data. And here we can see 
that we can leverage the connectors that I mentioned. They are all here, again, the ones I showed in the introduction, and we can use those to access information directly inside this interface that we are going to create. Another thing that's very used inside an app are the formulas. We have to put formulas to make things have actions. For example, the button now, if I click here in the top right on play to preview the app, I can play with the app here as if I was using already and I can click on the button, but it doesn't do anything because I didn't put any formula to do any action. I'll just give you an example of a formula and we will see that with more details later, but it's just to give an overview. If I click in any control, I also have this drop down here in the top with the properties. Those properties are the same that appear here in the right pane, but some of them doesn't appear here because they are the display ones. Just for the display, we have also advanced here. And one of the properties that we have is the on select. That means what the app will do when I press this control. For example, we have formulas. One of the, the formula is called notify. So if I type notify, open and close parentheses, and inside them, I put a message. For example, this is a message. And I click on play and press the button. I will see the notification in the top. That's the first formula. We called the notify. It's executed and showed here in the top this notification. Okay, now that we have our app here, let's learn how to save so we don't lose what we did so far. That's very simple, but we are going to use this app in the future lessons. So let's save. Here in the top, we have this save icon that we can hit save. It will save our app already and it will be there on make.powerapps.com for us to continue editing later. So if I go now to make.powerapps.com and I go to apps, we have here all the apps that we have access. We have my apps, apps that are shared with me and all the apps. On my apps, it's in here already. Power Apps Learning App. I can execute it. Here is the app and I can click on edit it. So it will open this editing interface. Notice that if I do any change that I want the users to execute, I need to publish. So if I do any change now, for example, insert a new text label, I need to publish in order for the users to see this new version, because right now it's showing the latest version. That's when I saved the first time. Now I can keep editing here, adding stuff. This is the version that the users are going to use. But if I publish, then I can hit here, publish. It will save the app and make the latest version available to the users. Okay, so keep this in mind. If you want the notifications to appear to the users, you save and publish. Okay, but, but how do the users have access? I need to share the app with the users if I want someone to also use it. And here we have the share button in the top. If I click on it, I'm going to go to the share pane where I can start adding users to my app. Let's say I want to share with my colleague Clark. I just select it. I can put a message to the email and add an image. He will receive a notification via email. But if I uncheck this, then he doesn't receive anymore. Okay, I can make Clark to be a co-owner so he can also add the app. If I don't check this, it means he can just use the app and he won't be able to edit. Imagine we are doing an app, now we want to ask help from someone you can share as a co-owner. And the other thing that when we share an app with someone we need to worry is about giving permission to the data. So if we have this app connected, for example, to a SharePoint list, the user who will use the app needs to have access to read and write to that list. Basically, he needs to be part of the site team. Because if the user doesn't have access, it means he won't be able to see any data and we'll just see the blank app. What a deception, right? But, okay, once we 
configure what we need here, we just click on share. The user will receive an email and he can play the app. We won't need to worry about this during this course because you're going to learn the basis. We are going to understand very well each part of building an app. But in case you're building an app on your company, then you know the process already. In the next lesson, we are going to dive deeper in this interface, see some other details to understand what they are, and then we are ready to get started with our learning path. See you in the next lesson.